So if you look at this exercise, this is the pie chart. This is the data that we're going to use to create that uh, square, square area chart. Now the first thing you should do is just uh, format your cells so that they look like this. What I did is just highlight these cells, make it small. So I just make this small, just are the sizes of the squares, right? And then go and just type 1 to 100. And the way you type the 1 to 100 should be the way you would like it to show. So if somebody has only 1%, this, is, this cell will be shaded. Then 2%, 2%, 3%, 4%. So if he has all 9%, this is it. And if he had up to 10, if he had 10, 10%, uh, it will show this. Then 11, 12, okay, let me make this a bit bigger for you to see. Okay, so what you do is you type the one, two, threes the way you'd like it to grow or show. Now, if you, if you think about it, this is your chart. Now, we want to shade this. What we do is we would now shade it in a way that really doesn't show the numbers. The numbers are hidden behind. So I'm going to hide these numbers. The way to hide your numbers is to do a special format in Excel that we call this disappearing format. It's three semicolons in your custom format tab. That will make everything disappear. You will not see it. It's in the cell, but you can't see it. Then you go to your home tab, and then you shade those cells to maybe a gray, gray shading. Once you shade it gray, it obviously looks like this. Uh, it's not that cool. So what you do next is you put, put borders around it. So the, the border you're going to put around it may be this thickness. I think this thickness is fine. So you put borders around it like this. Once you put borders around it, you actually change the color of the borders to white. And you put the borders around it again. So you see it's white. Once you click OK, this is what happens. You can now see it's now basically a box shaped. Now, once it's box shaped like this, the next thing you need to do is color it based on a gradient. So if you come to your data, what you do with your data is you have all your figures that you want to uh, work with. These are all the figures you're working with. And you basically, Coca-Cola is this amount, these are the various amounts. You arrange these figures in descending order. Once you arrange it in descending order, uh, which is what I've done here. I've used the formula to do that. Again, I'll share this template with you if you join the group. Then um, these are the cumulate, these are the share prices. So this is this is 23% of the total. This is 22% of the total, another 22%, 17%, 16%. If I press F9, it keeps changing and it keeps arranging it. Then all I do is now do a cumulative of this and the cumulative of this is simply equal to um, is equal to a sum of this and itself, and then I lock I lock this. If you want to do cumulative calculation, this is the trick. So you you lock that first one, and then when you drag it down, it does cumulative, right? And this would be 100 anyway. So with this data, I'm going to name this. This is rank one. This is rank two. This is rank three. This is rank four, and this is rank five. So I'm basically going to say anything below 23%, anything below 23% should be colored a certain thing. Anything below 44% should be colored a certain way. I'm just going to do two so you see how it works. So what I do here is, since I have one, two, three inside these cells, I come to, I highlight it and go home to conditional format, and I'm going to create a new rule. In my new rule for conditional format, I'm going to say, hey, do you know what? I want you to format only cells that contain something. So cell values that are, let's say, um, less than or equal to, where are you? Less than or equal to, and I press my F3, I want you less than or equal to rank one. But rank one is a percentage, and all these things are one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. I know that rank one is a percentage, so I need to multiply this by 100. So unfortunately, it won't allow me for now. Let me just go to format first. And for format, I'm going to go to fill, and I'm going to pick maybe this thick, this thick one. My rank two will be this, or rank three, rank four, and that's how it goes. So I click this, and I say, do you know what, times 100. And then I say, OK. Now if you go to the left here, you see that it's done the format for that section. 
Then I do the second one, and I'm just going to do two for, for time. So I go to the second one, I go to home, I go to conditional format, and I go to new rule, and I say I want it to basically do the same thing, cell value that is less than or equal to this time rank two. Rank two is just one cell. It's a cell that has the rank for the second uh, uh, value, which is under format, and I'll say, okay, do you know what? I want you to fill it with this shade. Say, okay, and the rank two should be multiplied by 100. Now, if I click okay, again, if you come here, you will see that it doesn't seem to have worked. Now, let me explain why. If I come to home, let me quickly add in a new rule and cell value that contains less than or equal to, I'm going to add just one more. So you can see three, three makes a lot of sense. Rank three, and then I go to format and I'm going to pick maybe this one. Oh yeah, this one for rank three, click okay. And rank three times 100. So when I click okay, now, it seems like it's not working, but it is. Just watch. So what's happened here is that the order in which you've done your conditional format is not correct. So if I go to manage rules for conditional format, you'll see that the order it has shown in, in, in conditional format is rank three, rank two, rank one. It should be rank one, rank two, rank three. So what I do is click on this and just take it down to the last. Click on one and take it up. So you can see it's now one, two, three. When I apply, you will now see that it's working perfectly. So you repeat this process for rank four and rank five. If I don't even need rank five, you just rank four. And technically you've done this and you've basically automated this. When I press F9 now to do a refresh, you see that that cube is working perfectly. And that's how you create a square area chart. Cube Thanks for watching another training perfectly. video from Deep Brown Consulting. And that's see how you, you create a square.